And today we're here for the last in our series of the fundamentals of synthesis, and we're going to talk about modulation, the modulators, and LFO. Let's do this. Hello, Internet. Chris Klein here with Alma Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. And as we come to a close in our fundamentals of synthesis, today we're going to touch on modulation and the LFO, or low frequency oscillator, and what these can do for us in this domain, again, our trusty Roland SH-101. So let's talk about LFOs and how they are going to manipulate and modulate our signals. Here we go. So this is the last in our series of the fundamentals of synthesis. And we've talked about the voltage-controlled oscillator, the mixer, the VCF, or voltage-controlled filter, and the VCA envelope, or voltage-controlled amplifier, ADSR, how this can be manipulated. So last but certainly not least is our LFO. Here is our modulator. The LFO lives right here, and it can be routed to different parts of the keyboard. And this is usually the case in point in most analog synthesizers that incorporate an LFO, right? And we can also manipulate parts of the LFO from down here as well with our pitch bend and whatnot, but we're going to focus primarily on this and what it's going to do. So right now if I play a note, you will notice that we're listening to a combination of the pulse or square, the sawtooth, as well as the sub-oscillator with no noise, right? Now, if I bring this up, this is the LFO rate. You're not really going to hear anything at all, right? So let's bring our modulation up, amount, right? And you will notice that what is happening to our oscillator is the pitch is being modulated by the LFO, the low frequency oscillator. And I have it set to square wave right now. So as it modulates, it's going to modulate to one extreme and to the next extreme. If we go to triangle, it's going to have more of this type of modulation to it. Right, so you can actually hear it modulating over time as opposed to one extremity to the next extremity or the compression and rear fraction of the LFO. If I turn up the rate, you can hear the pitch changing even more quickly. Right? So if I change it to square, you're going to notice it's going to go do 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 do, right? Think 50 sci fi films and something amazing has just happened. A robot has blown up or something, and you get that type of noise instead of an explosion because they really knew what they were doing back then and it was awesome. Right? Now we can change how much it's being modulated, right? The pitch being shifted up and down by moving this up. We can change the speed even more. And we're almost getting into FM territory again, where the modulation is happening so fast that it creates an entirely new timbre. Now, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Now, we can also incorporate random, a random waveform, which is going to change our pitches over time, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Go real fast. And that might have been the, the sound of Hal losing his mind in 2001 A Space Odyssey. You go to the more extreme, right? Bring it all the way back. But our LFO doesn't have to just modulate pitch. In this instance, it can modulate the pulse width, right? So let's make sure this is turned all the way down, which it is. Our pulse width is turned all the way down. Now if I manipulate the pulse width, let me go ahead and turn the soft heat down. You get that lightsaber effect again, right? <clears throat> But I can actually modulate this over time by turning this up. Now if I bring the modulation up here, and you'll notice that it's bundled in with the VCO, 
It's also going to manipulate the pitch, too. So now, the rate of our LFO is modulating the pulse width as well as the pitch of the VCO, or the rate of the modulation of the pitch of the VCO. And for those of you that are into certain types of electronic music, now we're kind of getting into that Boards of Canada type of feel, right? It's kind of a lo-fi, tape warble type of sound without the use of a tape machine or wow and flutter. But what else can the LFO modulate? <clears throat> right now, so far, we have modulated the pitch as well as the pulse width. Now I'm gonna turn the pulse width all the way down. We're we'll bringing our modulation amount down and our LFO down. And I'm gonna go come over to our ADSR and switch it to LFO. So now we can modulate the envelope, the amplitude envelope, right? So now it's turning on and off. modulation amount back up. Well now we're modulating the pitch of the oscillator again and then our LFO clock rate is also having an effect on our amplitude envelope. Bring in our sawtooth, turn up the resonance, turn up the pulse width a little bit. And we can even modulate our filter. So I'm turning up the modulation slider on our filter. with random turned on, turn the rate up, and you can actually hear the filter because on random, it's changing the rate of the pulse, right? Or excuse me, it's changing the, the, the amplitude of the pulse, which is also changing the way the filter is opening and closing. So it starts to sound like the filter is kind of percolating. So cool. And sounds like this remind me of old mute recordings like Fad Gadget and early Depeche Mode. So that is the pur purpose of our modulator and or the LFO, the low frequency oscillator. So it just gives you more to play with. Let's slow it down a lot as we come to an end on this five part series.
so we understand that some of you already know how all this stuff works, but we also know that there are quite a few people that don't fully understand what's happening on the signal path, and that's why we're doing this. So if there's something else that you would like for us to cover in regards to synthesis, please let us know in the comments below. Or if I miss something, I miss things all the time. I'm, I'm human, I'm fallible, I know this. So if I miss something, also please let me know or let us know down in the comments below and let's keep this conversation flowing. Um, we really enjoy uh, sharing this information and, and hopefully giving people uh, a better understanding and, and building blocks to help their music production uh, life and their knowledge of synthesis or whatever it happens to be a little more stable and a little more firm. <clears throat> With that being said, we are going to be coming back with more, uh, and we do have other channels. We have our bass channel, piano channel, guitar channel, accordion channel. I'm sure we're going to think up of some other channels here at some point in the future. So, so please stay tuned. Subscribe to us. Uh, once again, I'm going, to, I'm going to say it again. Comment below. Let's keep the conversation flowing. Until next time, I'm Chris Klein with Alma Music Center in San Antonio, and we look forward to seeing you again. Keep, keep on creating. Be kind to each other. Bye-bye.